Aloha and welcome to Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Walter Cranktight, filling in for Stan today, who's vacationing or something stupid somewhere in Hawaii. I know he's around someplace, but he asked me to fill in for him here from Paris because there's a lot of French stories in today's world news. And he says he can't speak much French. And I'm kind of torqued at him because I don't speak any French. So anyway, let's get cranking with the stories here. The first story actually I got directly from a friend of mine, and it says that uh, the Indiana, Indiana Department of Transportation is getting ready to set up a self-charging highway for electric cars. In other words, you know how you can take your cell phone and you can put it on a little pad and it, you don't have to plug anything in, it just charges right there on that little charger. Well, a company in Germany has developed a magnetic type of charging system that works on electric cars and they're saying they're going to be able to, in Indiana, check this stuff out. They're going to build a section of highway, and they're going to run these electric cars over this highway and charge them. Really? I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, if, if you can do that, why don't you just take all the batteries out of the electric cars and put electric in all the highways and just run them all and save all the batteries? Probably be a lot more reliable, like the old street cars and stuff. But then again... I know somebody is going to get drunk and take a pee on the electric highway, zap himself, and sue the state. I'm not sure this is a great idea. But anyway, we'll check out Indiana and see how they do because they're, they're making it happen. If you want more on the story, you can, uh, you can check them out. I guess at the in, INDOT, that's their, uh, that's their uh, Department of Transportation in Indiana. This next story comes uh, directly from AC Transit. They publish, they're publishing a groundbreaking zero emission transit bus technology analysis. They call it the ZBTA. Now, this is actually a, a really, really great piece of work because for those of you that aren't aware, AC Transit has probably, arguably, more experience in electric buses and, and fuel cell buses than probably any other bus company around the US for sure, probably in the world. And the nice thing is they do regular buses too. So they've been compiling data for decades on gasoline buses, diesel buses, fuel cell buses, uh, natural gas powered buses, electric buses. And they're compiling all this data, putting it into a great guide. So that if you're a city planner and you wanna know the pluses and minuses of electric versus fuel cell, fuel cell versus natural gas, natural gas versus diesel. It's all in one place and you can check it out. So go to www.actransit, all one word, dot org and check them out. It's a great, great story and uh, probably a great piece of, um, of uh, data, uh, to place to find data. Uh, I got this story directly from the company called Gencel. It says, Gencel Energy successfully deploys its revolutionary a5 off-grid solution for satisfactory 24-7 powering of emergency communication systems in Iceland. Iceland. I've been to Iceland. The weather sucks in Iceland. It can be 65 and clear one minute, and 10 minutes later, you got snow blowing sideways, and it's 20, mile, 20 degrees and 45 miles an hour of wind. It's the craziest place on the planet to test anything outdoors, and they've tested their system according to this thing, for two months straight, and it's been flawless. So I think gen cell might be onto something. I mean, we use fuel cells a lot for um, data centers and also for cell tower backup uh, power. But this is a real test. And if you want to read more about it, uh, go check out gen cell and uh, check out that system. I bet it's going to be a winner. Anyway, next story, and this is really a big one. Everybody's watching the Olympics from Tokyo. Well, that's because last year when they were supposed to have the Olympics, everybody was bottled up with COVID. And it was supposed to be the year that they showcased hydrogen technology. Well, they're doing the Olympics and they're showcasing hydrogen technology as we speak. They've set up some hydrogen um, uh, cities or, or communities for the Olympic athletes to, to uh, stay in. And the hydrogen is not only providing the electricity and the transportation, 
It's uh, also be fueling the athletes' buses, their water heaters in the cafeteria, and their heat in their dormitories, uh, air conditioning, training facilities. And after the games, the underground pipes will take the hydrogen from a production station to residential blocks in the area around the Olympic villages. So they're really demonstrating the full spectrum of hydrogen in Japan during the Olympics. So keep a close eye on that. Somebody even told me the, the torch, Olympic torch was hydrogen. I'm not sure if they actually pulled that off. Uh, another paper that's being put out, another good research paper for folks doing some heavy research for communities. This is a position paper called Heavy Duty Vehicles, Charging and Refueling Infrastructure Requirements. And it's put out by the European Association of Automobile Manufacturers, ACEA. And it's an interactive map showing a number of specific hydrogen truck stations needed for each member state by 2025 and then 2030. And Europe has a fairly aggressive decarbonizing goal, set of goals, and this fits right in there with it. It says, in addition to the target of around 300 trucks suitable hydrogen re refueling stations by 2025, it's going to have at least 1,000 no later than 2030, and that's the goal they've set. Moreover, one hydrogen refueling site should be available every 200 kilometers on the 10T highway system, and that will be in by 2030. A hydrogen refueling station for trucks should have a minimum daily capacity of at least six tons of hydrogen. Hydrogen is 14 times lighter than air, so imagine what six tons of hydrogen looks like in volume with at least two dispensers per station. If you want to look up that, more on that uh, story, you can look at www.acea.autopublication. The next story is uh, from for Honda lovers. Honda is ready for a quicker shift to all electrified lineup, says their CEO. The good news is they're still focusing on fuel cells. The bad news is their only production car, the Clarity, is being canceled this year. And they're going to keep working with General Motors, who they've been working with a lot on fuel cells. And General Motors is actually stepping way out with the military and everybody else on fuel cell. So Honda and GM will be working together on fuel cells. And I'm willing to bet that both of them are going to come out with some pretty slick vehicles, probably by about 2025. Um, the car companies are really good about keeping secrets until right before they release them. And then boom, they hit the market. So I expect that's going to be happening pretty soon. They've definitely, Honda's definitely made a commitment to stay with fuel cells. And if you want to read more about that story, you can check with Asia Nikkei, N I K K E I dot com. For those of you who don't know, Nikkei is Japanese for the stock market. All right, next story repurposing existing gas infrastructure to pure hydrogen. Acer finds divergent visions of that future. The whole story can be found at www.aceureopa.eu slash events. Now, this story is kind of interesting because I'm going to expand on the whole topic of ga hydrogen gas in natural gas pipelines. This is kind of a trend going on. Even here in Hawaii, we had a go at this early on, and they're still looking at it. But here's my take on it. Walter Cronk, uh, Crank type would not lie to you. A lot of nations still want to try and use natural gas and stretch it as long as they can. No one more so than the companies that make gas turbines to make energy, to make electricity. So they, were, they thought it was smooth sailing to go natural gas is going to be cheap. It's going to be easy. And then all of a sudden, everybody in the world started going no carbon, no carbon, no carbon. And now they're panicking. So they're trying to squeeze hydrogen into natural gas with an end game of making their turbines run on natural gas. But there's a couple of problems with this. A lot of the hydrogen pipes and infrastructure have been, or natural gas infrastructure has been around for decades and decades and decades. And you just can't put hydrogen into natural gas pipelines because of embrittlement, leaks, hydrogen is a very small atom. It leaks out of everything. What may hold tight with uh, natural gas is probably going to leak like a sieve with hydrogen. 
there's a lot of issues with getting to pure hydrogen in those pipelines. So that's one thing. The other thing is, why would you take very expensive hydrogen that you're making with electrolysis or whatever and burn it in a turbine that's only 34 or 35% efficient when you could put it in a fuel cell and it's 60% efficient? As a general rule, if you're going to burn natural gas, hydrogen, fuel, oil, if you're going to burn it in an engine or a boiler or anything, you better have some extra use for the extra heat and other things that come off of that turbine or that engine. Because if you're just burning it, you're wasting it. You don't have to burn hydrogen to get the full effect of getting electricity from it, put it in a fuel cell. So all the stories that I hear about, we're trying to put hydrogen in natural gas pipelines. It's great for moving it around the country. It's great for helping the transportation sector and, and avoiding transportation costs. So you don't have to truck this hydrogen all over as liquid hydrogen or ammonia or anything. Yeah, you can move it around that way. But when you start talking about using it to replace natural gas for other things, eh, people are going to say, well, we can't smell hydrogen. You have to put some odorizer in it. Well, if you put the same odorizer that they use in natural gas so you can smell it, it's got sulfur in it. Sulfur kills fuel cells. So it's, it's a non-starter for fuel cells. So anyway, if you want to learn more about that story, Acer Europa will tell you all about it. Next story, Ballard receives an order for fuel cell modules to power the trial operation of a Siemens Mirko Plus H train. This is a great story because I think a fuel cell is going to, it's going to prove to be really great in all transportation sectors, including trains. Um, diesel electric trains are actually, locomotives are pretty prevalent around the world. And I can see hydrogen easily replacing diesel generators in, uh, in these electric trains. So it's a fairly easy conversion. But there is one thing that I hope they're thinking about. If you've listened to Stan the Energy Man much, he says, when it comes to transportation, it's all about weight. In other words, you want to make your transportation system as light as possible, so you're not moving around a bunch of weight. The one exception probably would be trains. If your locomotive doesn't weigh a boatload, it doesn't get any tractions on its wheels to pull a mile worth of you know, freight behind it, you've got to have enough weight in the locomotive. So maybe hydrogen you have to put a whole lot of lead weight on those locomotives so they can get traction on their tracks when you take off all of the fuel that they're burning and get rid of all that weight but it'll be much cleaner and it'll be much better for the environment uh, next article five lessons to learn on hydrogen as ship fuel there's a this is another great resource document a consortium of 26 leading companies and associations has published a handbook for hydrogen fuel vehicles or vessels, excuse me, to shed light on the most pressing issues surrounding hydrogen as ship fuel. So you can find the whole story in www.dnv.com expert story slash expert dash story. And I think it'd be a, a great thing if you're interested in maritime, because again, I think uh, it's going to be great when we get hydrogen in vessels. Um, they said phase one is complete. Um, in that study, and they're looking to publish a handbook, which they intend to keep on updating constantly. Um, first hydrogen homes to open to the public. This story comes out of the UK. So if you want to follow up, it's www.northerngasnetworks.co.uk. That's all one word, Northern Gas Networks. So anyway, over in the UK, so sorry to... Um, to uh, Mike Stritsky, but they have a hydrogen house project in the UK as well. And that hydrogen house project, um, they're gonna have people living in these houses and they're gonna start rotating hydrogen equipment through the houses so people can use them and give the manufacturers feedback as they get closer and closer to full-scale production. So it's a great way to give feedback to the customers and great way to promote hydrogen as well. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, hydrogen as a source of fuel for gas burners, it is pretty nice because it's, it gives you a really focused heat 
it doesn't radiate a whole lot of heat because there's no carbon in it. So your kitchen stays a little cooler. It just focuses the heat right where you need it. But you do have to change the burners a little bit. You don't want to mix your oxygen with your hydrogen on the way to the burner. You don't want the hydrogen to go straight to the burner, come out of the, the burner cluster and mix with oxygen outside, not inside your, your fuel lines. But it's a great way to cook. Let me see, Chevron and Cummings announced strategic collaboration on hydrogen. And this story comes out of www.cummins.com slash news. And for those of you that, that have a shorter memory than Walter Cranktite, um, Cummins bought out uh, hydro, Hydrogenics out of Canada, a major uh, fuel cell manufacturer about two years ago. And they have been working hard a diesel company has been working really hard uh, in a special division on hydrogen fuel cell technology. So this memorandum of understanding provides a framework for Chevron and Cummins Diesel to initially collaborate on four main objectives, advancing public policy that promotes hydrogen as a decarbonizing solution for the transportation industry, building a market demand for commercial vehicles and industrial applications powered by hydrogen, developing infrastructure to support the use of hydrogen for industry and fuel cell vehicles, and finally, ex exploring opportunities to leverage Cummins ele electrolyzer technology and fuel cell technologies at one or more Chevron domestic refineries. So congratulations for Chevron and Cummins getting together on that. Apex Clean Energy and my plug power, one of my favorite companies. Plug power partner on largest green hydrogen power purchase agreement in the United States. I wish plug power stock would go up as much as I see them in the news. I mean, they they should be like gangbusters right now. Anyway, if you want to read more on this story, you can go to www.ir plug, P-L-U-G, P-O-W-E-R.com, press releases. So this is out of their website. But Plug Power is, um, they've, they're partnering with South Korea. They're partnering with the people in Europe. They're doing some great, great things. And that's just another example. Another big name in the news is Nikola Motors. Speaking of stock, if you want to get in on the ground floor, their stock is around 14 bucks a share right now. It's been as high as 120 or so in the last year. Um, and it, it dropped. Uh, but I'm telling you, they're like plug power. They're just, they keep on doing stuff and it keeps showing up in my news, news feeds and, and everything. And at some point, assuming the stock market stays on track, um, I think they're going to really grow. It says Nikola announces an expansion of its current Nikola dealer sales and service network with an additional five dealers covering key territories here in the US. So if you wanna read more on that story, it's N-I-K-O-L-A-M-O-T-O-R, nikolamotor.com slash press release. Again, Nikola focuses on the heavy trucks, but they, they don't market it, but they also have a off-road vehicle that's got 500 horsepower of electric drive in it with a fuel cell. I would check that out. Probably enough to kill yourself if you're a, if you're a silly off-roader like some of the characters I've seen. You can get really hurt with that thing. Anyway, check out Nikola Motors. Bloom Energy unveils electrolyzer to supercharge the path to low-cost net zero hydrogen. And they're saying that this piece of equipment out of Bloom Energy, and they're they're old timer in hydrogen. They've been around quite a while. But they're saying that this electrolyzer technology that they've developed, um, when they say it's supercharging, they, they mean it's really going to shake up the market. They're, they're claiming this is going to be one of those, uh, what do they call it, um, a game, not a game changer, uh, disruptive technology. They're claiming that it's going to be 15 to 45% more efficient than the current technology that's out there. That's huge. It's going to bring the cost down. Um, these are the kind of things in the hydrogen industry that you look for and go, hmm, this might be one to watch. Again, maybe maybe look at it as a stock, stock purchase down the road. 
And the next story is hydrogen investment pipeline grows to 500 billion in response to government commitments to decarbonization. So unlike the natural gas pipeline, they're talking about a money pipeline, 500 billion with a B, billion with a B. That's a lot of money. And that's from several countries uh, putting, putting things together. It says 359 large scale projects have been announced globally. 131 of those projects have been announced in the first half of this year. Europe is leading the way with investments of 130 billion, but other regions are catching up. Most notably, wake up America. Most notably, China. China is emerging as a potential hydrogen giant with 50 plus projects following announcements of net zero emissions by 2060. So if we would get, quit focusing on silly things and start focusing on what we need to be doing to stay competitive in the world, like America has always done in its history, its proud history, we would be working on hydrogen technology so that we stay dominant in the industry and environment. And we start fixing things up because China has a long ways to catch up to us, but guess what? They're doing it and they're working hard at it. So Mr. Biden, get on your running shoes and start looking at hydrogen and get moving. Uh, Universal Hydrogen in a net zero carbon plane deals with Iceland air. This is another, another great story. You wanna test it? You wanna know if it really works in cold weather? Take it to Iceland. They have great summers, but let me tell you the spring and the fall look just like Minnesota in the dead of winter, if you're not careful, it can be great. I mean, I was there on one military trip. We landed, it was 65 degrees. By the end of the week, we had four foot long icicles hanging off the building and it was 20 degrees with snow blowing sideways. And if you're an aviator, you really get an appreciation for nasty weather when you're in a place like Iceland. It's great people. They use all geothermal, super efficient country, um, great Scandinavian country. Lamb dogs are especially good. Try the lamb dogs. They're good if you ever go to Iceland and the Blue Lagoon, both really outstanding. But that's the place to test this stuff. Anyway, this company, and if you want to read more about it, another great news service, www.reuters.com. So that's R-E-U-T-E-R-S.com, business aerospace. These folks are um, developing kits and the kits include a fuel cell and electric powertrain to replace conventional turboprops built by Pratt & Whitney in Canada for the airlines. And, and the airlines are uh, investing in these kits uh, that can be offset against long-term contracts to supply fuel via modular capsules. So if, you're, if you know anything about designing airplanes and stuff, weight is critical, weight and balance is critical. So if you can replace an engine with similar thrust and similar characteristics with similar weight and similar size, you don't have to redesign the airplane. You can take plug and play and take a piece of equipment, put it in there, and you've got all your weight balance and all your other critical um, categories, all your, your critical functions met to make sure the airplane stays airworthy. Because in an airplane, if you add a bunch of weight here, you have to take some off there or put some more over here to balance it out. Depends on how far away it is from center of gravity. Otherwise, your plane doesn't fly very well. It can stall. It can do all kinds of nasty things. So these guys are getting it right. Modular goes into the airplane to replace an existing piece of equipment of similar weight and size and performance. That's the way to do it. NYPA testing green hydrogen at Brentwood Power Station. And eh, it's just another power, power plant story. Uh, new CEO uh, at the Hydrogen Council. I really like this story. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Hydrogen Council, the Hydrogen Council was started in early 2017. And it was kind of rolled out at the same time that US Department of Energy's hydrogen division was promoting um, scaling up hydrogen to a large scale. And they worked together, but this Hydrogen Council started with just a handful of companies, maybe 
five or 10 companies, but big names, Shell Oil, Toyota, you know, Air Liquide, Air Gas. They started off, that hydrogen council today in 2021 has, I think it's approaching 75 or 80 companies and they're not slouchy companies. So here you have the um, Cummings CEO moving in to replace one of the co-chairs who happens to be the CEO of Toyota. So we're not talking little small characters here. We're talking heavy hitters in industry, not hydrogen industry, industry. So Cummins Diesel CEO is replacing Toyota CEO as a co-chair. And the other co-chair is from um, Air Liquide, a French company. And he's, he's there as the other co-chair. I guess they rotate out in alternating positions so that they don't, they always have some continuity in there. But this hydrogen council has done yeoman's work in hydrogen industry to promote safety, to promote, you know, good business models. It's just outstanding. So if you want to look at that more, you can also check that Cummins.com uh, website and learn more about that. Amazon and UPS say hydrogen is farther down the road um, than electric. And that's nice. They caution that it's not like right there tomorrow, but it has longer legs, if I could use that term. They're starting to see that if you're going to buy a ton of batteries to provide for your system, for your network of forklifts or trucks or cars or whatever, it gets a little pricey real fast. But hydrogen has the capacity as it comes online and scales up to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, whereas batteries only have a projection to get more and more expensive. I don't care what Elon Musk says, there's this little thing called supply and demand. And when you're trying to replace huge, huge industries like transportation, you're going to run out of cobalt, you're going to run out of lithium, you're going to run out of a lot of stuff. So unless you can come up with some digital batteries, um, you know, some other technology, and that's supposedly a couple 20 years down the road. So uh, I think hydrogen is going to make a big, big inroads here for the next 20 years. And uh, Norway, Norway's Yara looks to supply zero carbon, carbon dioxide green ammonia to Japan. The funny thing about this story, if you want to learn more, it's on, again, asianike.com. Norway is making hydrogen in Australia to ship to Japan. Go figure. That's how big this stuff is. We're talking international here. That's why I'm broadcasting from Paris today. Uh, Hyundai Motors signs an MOU to com commercialize hydrogen fuel cell propulsion systems for marine vessels. Um, Hyundai is, you know, is from South Korea. They got the vehicles. They're the only company I know of that has two production vehicles out for sale around the world. And they're both good vehicles. I've driven um, their Tucson. It, it was actually my favorite of all the cars that I drove, all the vehicles I drove. <clears throat> and now they got the Nexo. Hyundai is really making great headway, and they're also trying to get into aviation a little bit and maritime. Toyota Mirai breaks world record for distance driven with one fill of hydrogen. So this new Toyota Mirai has increased the world's record distance to over a thousand kilometers on one fill of hydrogen. After breaking that record, the Mirai was refueled and ready to go in five minutes. This demonstrates hydrogen fuel te cell technology as a leading solution for long distance driving with zero emissions and a quick fill, by the way. That was from newsroom.toyota.eu. So it's a Europe, out of Europe. Okay, this one, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce this, the Scandinavian names of all these companies, <clears throat> but there's a Scandinavian company, again, out of Norway, that's going to be putting hydrogen propulsion in the longest ferry route in Norway, all hydrogen powered. If you want to check out that story, it's www.oceanhywayclustr.no slash news. So www.oceanhighwaycluster.norway.news. Let me see. Michelin to debut hydrogen powered endurance racer in the 2021 Greenwood Festival. 
And we're running out of time here. So my last story is actually one of my favorite. The eighth Monaco energy boat challenge is supposed to be the biggest yet. So right down from Paris here is the French Riviera and the great little monarchy of Monaco. Remember, if you, if you got a yacht, you just cruise on over there. But anyway, there's a boat there called the High Nova 40. It's the first pleasure vessel to be outfitted with that same fuel cell technology that went into the Energy Observer. I did a story on the Energy Observer when they visited Hawaii before they went to Tokyo for the Olympics. It's made by Toyota, and now it's in another boat that's going to be shown in Monaco. So Walter Cranktite here, going to be signing off. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll try and give Stan your best and uh, see where the heck he is out here in Hawaii and have him back next week. Aloha.